son of Javel! Kneel before Sad! Okay, before I start, I'd like to state that, for the purposes of this review, and for the purposes of trying to remain as impartial as possible, I will avoid focusing on two things. The first is the claim that this is the first Warhammer 40k movie. It's not. It might be the first official 40k movie, but it's not the first full-length feature. That, to the best of my knowledge, was an independent fan effort made in Germany on a budget of peanuts and love, called Damnatus. The second is the film referring to the Smurfs as the greatest of them all. No, they really aren't. Unless they're being written by a fanboy who thinks bullshit and plot armour are awesome. So with that out of the way, on to the film. Whatever else I may think of the Smurfs, there was definite potential with this film. Is that potential fulfilled? Nope. Even with the greatest will in the world, even letting slide everything that could annoy or frustrate me, this is not the film it could have been, or, you could argue, should have been. The biggest problem is, in all honesty, the budget. This was a direct-to-mail-order DVD title. There was no way in the warp that this thing was going to get a massive budget. A 70-minute CG movie the quality of a Dawn of War cutscene was never going to happen. And sadly, that does show. Some of the animation looks a little amateurish. One close-up shot of a trigger being pulled looked like I had animated it. Some of the texturing is terrible. And the faces oh, by the Emperor's deep vein thrombosis, they are abysmal. I mean, they are truly awful. I was actually encouraged with some early test footage that was released, but for whatever reason, they just didn't deliver on that promise. I know it's easy to say when you're not the one funding it, but for the want of a bit of extra cash for polish, this could have looked a lot better than it actually does. On the upside, the actual models for the Space Marine power armour are pretty good, and on a few occasions they really do look the part. On the downside, however, the bolters are way oversized and look faintly ridiculous. And yes, I do realise I'm saying that about a future military force comprised of super soldiers that don't understand words like camouflage. The story is simple enough, although it seems to be doing its best to paint the Smurfs in as poor a light as possible, because damn are some of the apparently codex things they do stupid, up to, and including, giving an entire battle barge over to one captain and a small squad of new recruits to go and assist an entire company of Imperial Fists. But do you know what? Despite all that bitching, I actually do like this film. Because one thing it does very well is generate atmosphere. No, this is not the balls to the wall action film most of us probably would have liked, but the makers obviously understood the limitations their budget placed on them and created accordingly. As the story progresses, there is a genuine air of intrigue as the tension builds. It doesn't reach any sort of fever pitch, this is true, but it certainly adds a lot to the picture as a whole. There are also some good moments of genuine nasty gruesomeness. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but fairly well done all the same. The action set pieces we do get aren't too bad, all things considered, and they are actually helped by the rest of the film being quite atmospheric. When they hit, they provide a decent release from the nicely building tension, and there is one moment when we do get to see an Astartes in full badass flow. What I can very much appreciate about the action sequences is that, at the very least, they tried. The Ultramarines have chainswords, chainswords are used, and when they are used, bits of body do go flying. Yes, you could easily argue that there wasn't enough of said lopping off of bits, but again, that isn't the story that's being told here. But one place where this film does excel is in the voice acting. Sean Pertwee, Terence Stamp and John Hurt were inspired casting choices for Space Marines, as all three have the kind of voice that fit perfectly with genetically modified death machines. But even outside those you've heard of, the rest of the cast do a stellar job, however big or small the role. On top of that, the characters themselves aren't that bad. There's a nice competitive dynamic between Proteus and Veronor, 
and Pythol has a lovely streak of humour brought on by years of service. The pacing throughout is very good indeed, and despite a couple of poorly executed twists, the ending does one thing that I love to see. It pits space marines against a foe that outmatches them. Overall, this is not a bad film, not by any stretch of the imagination. Aside from featuring Ultramarines showing their awesomeness by doing stupid things, its biggest flaw will always be that the budget just wasn't there to add some much needed polish. This is not the best 40k movie, that would still be Damnatus. This is not the 40k film that most of us wanted, but it is still a well-paced, well-acted, nicely atmospheric slice of science fiction.